Hello, uh, Stephen Wellman here with Slashdot Media. We're here with Ryan Tabra from Intel. Ryan, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do at Intel and sort of the evolution of the perceptual computing experience? I'm a uh, product marketing engineer manager uh, for the, uh, the UX uh, developer products group. Um, what we do is we specialize in creating developer products that enable developers to uh, enhance user experience on platforms. What do you mean when you talk about sort of perceptual computing? What is it exactly that we're talking about here? Is it just gesture control? Does it go beyond just hand gestures? What all is involved in that? It is really, you know, I think the, the future of perceptual computing is literally for folks to feel that their devices are actually reading their minds, right? And, and doing things on behalf of them, um, interacting in a smarter fashion. Uh, the, uh, the experience that a user might have would be literally that, oh wow, that, uh, that menu came up before I even thought about that I needed to go there, right? Um, we're seeing a lot of that with data crunching, but we think that there can be a way to interact with the end user and use the near field interaction of the video camera, uh, the, uh, the voice recognition aspects, uh, the modality of, of, of having like your, yeah, your facial expression analyzed in real time, knowing if you're happy, sad, um, upset, um, if you're engaged uh, to the content on, on, on the platform um, will really shift the way people develop applications and we just want to give the tools to make it easy for that to happen, right? And to uh, uh, innovate and uh, change the way uh, applications are developed today. We've seen a lot of demos uh, for perceptual computing with gaming, uh, but it seems to me there's a myriad of potential vertical applications that go just beyond games. Could you give our audience a little bit of an example of ways in which perceptual computing can go beyond uh, just interacting with a video game into something that's, uh, I don't want to say just the real world video games are the real world, but something that goes beyond just sort of gaming applications? Yeah, you, of course, video game is very, very important um, to the perceptual computing experience. Uh, and video game is, is what a lot of people use these devices for. Folks who do not grow up with computers still don't understand control tab and alt tab which we computer geeks get to use all day long to effortlessly flow through all the windows and, and do multi-processing and multi-applications across our compute devices. And something as simple as being able to raise your hand and going like this and having all your windows pop open and you just kind of look or point to what you actually wanted to get to is pretty powerful, right? And it, and it brings an accessibility factor to compute devices. It brings it home to uh, not only the, the future generations, but also to folks who, again, are not as, uh, what do I say, like they, they don't live and breathe computers every day. They just want them to work, right? And I think that perceptual computing is that step forward into making these devices just work for people. Perceptual computing is going to change the way um, that uh, you can interact with users as they walk by or interact with these devices. What's kind of the next frontier for perceptual computing we're hearing? We're hearing gestures, we're hearing facial recognition, you've even mentioned eye movements. Mm -hmm. What's the next sort of level of interactivity that we can expect? Well, I think the, the expectation should be uh, more around uh, not only the, the adding voice, right, in conjunction with all those things that you, that you just listed. Uh, I think uh, the perceptual computing is moving towards more biometric stuff in real time, you know. Uh, just again, you, you're so close to these devices what, what's happening with the human body? How is it interacting? Are you nervous, right? Uh, those kind of things will, will go a long way, but those are, are still uh, to be determined. But uh, as we move along, we hope that we've laid the, the foundation from a developer standpoint that they can trust our platform to not leave them behind and, and, and force, it, force upon them a new uh, interface every single chipset that's released, right? You know, we're, we're trying to deliver the tools that make it uh, easy to for, for a developer to go, you know what, I see potential here for me to differentiate in my application, and there's huge ROI in this area, and I know that if I take the time to develop it in the two months and I release it, that it'll still function. We have a global developer audience here at Slash.media, and a lot of them, however, haven't actually gone out and tried developing for a kind of perceptual framework, what are some initial pieces of advice that you would give to a developer looking at perceptual computing who hasn't necessarily developed in this kind of modality before? How, how can they begin to sort of dip their toes in the water, so to speak? 
Yeah, you know, uh, first thing, of course, is to go download the Intel Perceptual Computing SDK. I think that we are leading the charge in giving developers a quick start guide. Uh, we have coding samples that they can reuse and play around with it by themselves, right? We have um, coding challenges they can be part of um, to, to play around with it. We, of course, are talking to you about the interface and the perceptual compute part of these devices, but you can imagine the amount of data coming through. And I think there's a huge amount of potential, like knowing that this perceptual data is coming in. Data storage, uh, communicating these things, having multiple devices talking to each other at the same time, having the same perception, what does that do, right? So I think, you know, literally just uh, watching lots of sci-fi films and going, we can actually recreate that now. A lot of this sounds like desktop computing. What about perceptual mobility? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are, uh, right now, of course, we've, we've started with the, the Ultrabook platform. As, as a means to have it because, you know, with some of the camera and all, all these other things, you do need a certain level of compute. But as uh, Intel pushes the boundaries of the mobile devices and brings uh, the uh, today's Ultrabook uh, platform to tomorrow's phones and tablets and stuff, you mentioned a little bit about computing challenges. I believe there's a perceptual computing challenge that's winding down. or it's That's right. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, by the time this video goes live, uh, we have about two weeks right now for the uh, perceptual computing challenge to be going on. And uh, hopefully by now you can go check out the results and uh, uh, check out some of the top applications at the perceptual computing challenge uh, dot com. And be sure to um, become part of uh, future challenges that might be available. And just finally, uh, where could some of the developers in this audience go and download uh, the perceptual developer tools? That's right. So uh, we have a couple of uh, tools um, in our uh, in our suite, I guess, of, of, uh, of uh, UX developer products. We have the Perceptual Computing SDK, which is at intel.com slash software slash perceptual. Then we also have the Media SDK, which deals with primarily video and video hardware acceleration, which is at intel.com slash software slash media SDK. And we now also have a new um, Android native um, developer package SDK, which is codenamed Beacon Mountain, which is also in beta form. So be sure to be part of that if you want to be involved with the future of Android development on Intel platforms. All right. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thank you.